Now, two individuals who were not psychologists but were magazine editors was a mother-daughter team of Catherine Briggs and Isabel Briggs Myers. And in the 1940s, they were reading a lot about Young's works and connecting these four personality types, and they thought it might be fun to make a magazine quiz trying to identify your personality type. This was not started off as a scientific investigation, and they wanted to take a play on Young's four types of sensing, intuitive, feeling, and thinking. Only they did it with quite a bit of a twist. Instead of looking at these four types, they looked at four dimensions. There was one dimension where you were considered to be either sensing or intuitive, and you had to be one or the other. There was a second dimension where you considered either feeling or thinking and one or the other. Plus they took another one of Jung's theories, which was about extroversion versus introversion. Those who are really outgoing versus those who are really withdrawn and more quiet and keep to themselves. And finally, a fourth dimension was considered to be the dimension of judging versus perceiving. And this was considered to be, if you're watching a movie, let's say, can you just watch the movie and enjoy it? Or are you constantly watching it with a critical lens and coming up with your critique and your review while you're watching the movie? So the Mother's Daughters team created what was known as the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. And it was considered to be this survey where you find out if you're an extrovert or an introvert, if you're sensing or intuitive, if you're feeling or thinking, and if you're judging or perceiving. And so you would get to have four letters that would designate your type. And so rather than just having four types of personality, as Young would suggest, they came up with 16 different types of personality. Now this is something that remains super popular today. Even in many business schools and post-secondary institutions, you can do the Myers-Briggs to find out your own personality type. There's people that swear by the differences. If we were to look in the top left corner and the bottom right corner, we might see some personality differences here. For instance, if we looked at someone who's an extrovert, high in sensing, feeling, and judging, this might mean someone who is really interested in their outside world. They're constantly going and socializing with others. They like to take in information through the senses. They feel very strongly through their emotions. And because they feel very strongly, they're quick to judge things. We can, we can see that person. By the opposites, we could look down in the lower corner and we could see an introvert who's more about intuition, less about sensing things. They're more about thinking rather than feeling. So there's that introvert who's always rational and always in their head, and they're not so quick to judge. They withhold judgment. They're more about perceiving and pondering things over. Those two extremes, we can certainly see the differences. However, if we were to look at all 16 types, we see a lot of repeats and we see a lot of things that start to blend together. And what's more important is we've acknowledged that this is not a scientific measure. Although today it is sold and marketed as one, we found there's lots of holes in the Myers-Briggs type indicator. So let's talk about some of these critiques. One of the biggest critiques is it's not empirically supported. Although today the modern Myers-Briggs actually has a board of governors that includes psychologists with PhDs, none of those board members actually use the Myers-Briggs in their own research. And that research studies to date have not been able to support the Myers-Briggs. Although it's based on Jungian theory, Jungian theory is also not supported in science. And lots of earlier things about the four humors and astrology and cartoons are all entertaining, but not supported by science. And so there's some specific criticisms of the Myers-Briggs that we need to talk about. Where the Myers-Briggs really starts off having problems is right away with how the questions are designed. The questions are designed in a forced choice format. This means with each question on the survey, you have to choose between two statements. And by choosing between these two statements, it causes a problem if you agree a lot with both the statements or you disagree with both the statements or you feel neutral about both the statements. It's not really taking that into account. Some of the questions are things like, are you more driven by emotions or more driven by logic? What if you feel that your emotions can be logical sometimes? There's no way to answer that. Or are you driven more by your head or more by your heart? Well, what does driven by your heart even mean? Isn't that just your limbic system which, which is in your head? What is the difference between rational cognitions and the emotions tied to those cognitions? As we just talked about in unit 10, emotions and cognitions are very much intertwined. There was one question on the Myers-Briggs, if you were a teacher, would you rather focus on the facts or on the theory? And I hope that I'm proving that I'm teaching you facts about the theories of personality right now, and they are so heavily intertwined. I would have a difficulty pulling that apart. 
And are you more interested in science or art? Again, I hope that through this lecture you can appreciate I can teach you about the science of psychology in a more artful way. A lot of the questions on the Myers-Briggs really puts these two things that seem to be opposites against each other and you have to choose. For myself personally, when I look at the Myers-Briggs questions, I feel like I equally endorse almost all of the things they're asking about and it would be really difficult for me to choose. A lot of other people have experienced the same thing. And so what happens with these forced choice questions is they're meant to divide us into categories. It's the idea that let's say we're talking about extroversions versus introverts. We're trying to decide who's an extrovert and who's an introvert. We're trying to say these are the people that are considered to be blue and they're the extroverts. These are the people considered to be red and they're the introverts. When in reality, something like extroversion introversion isn't black or white. It's on a spectrum. People are not just blue and red, extroverts, introverts. There's lots of shades of purple or lots of shades of gray in there. And what often happens is somebody might want to be outgoing sometimes, but not all the time. And they might want to be withdrawn and stay at home some of the time, but not all the time. And where the Myers-Briggs gets it wrong is they assume we can make these choices easily and be clustered into one of these categories. But what science has proven time and time again is nearly all measurable human characteristics fall along a normal curve. And so we're not categories, we're distributions. And so this leads us to the problem in general of finding personality types. What we find is we can't cluster into four personality types like Ninja Turtles or elements. We don't follow types, we follow traits. So where the Myers-Briggs was really trying to get at was trying to break us down into two groups. It was trying to say, okay, there might be some people in the middle of a distribution, but they're gonna be the minority. We could probably cluster a lot of people into judging and a lot of people into perceiving, or a lot of people into sensing and a lot of people into intuition, or a lot of people into extroversion or introversion. And they believe that the curve or the distribution would look something like this with fewer people in the middle. However, what we have found is the human distribution looks more like this, with lots of people in the middle. In fact, for almost every human measurable trait we can find, 68% of us are in the middle. So what would their measure even mean if close to 70 of us are in the middle on extroversion and introversion? If nearly 70 of us are in the middle of sensing and intuition, or feeling and thinking, or judging and perceiving? Well, it means their test is not that useful because most of us are going to be right in the middle. And because they take a split, what they're essentially saying is someone who scores just to the right of this black line is very different from someone who scores just to the left of the black line. But they're also trying to say how someone who scores in this blue zone is exactly the same as someone who scores in the red zone out on the tail. And we know that's less likely. The people that are in the red zones on the tail are the exceptions. They are the people that are very different and more unique. And so the Myers-Briggs isn't reflecting how human characteristics actually work. So then why does the Myers-Briggs stay popular? Why do we continue to see the Myers-Briggs in business? Well, it's because of the Barnum effect. The Barnum effect is that when you go through the Myers-Briggs type indicator and you find out your type, it's usually described in a really broad way. It usually doesn't give you any negative implications. It just gives you these really broad statements and it makes it seem like it's true. And that's because the broad statements are written in a way that they could apply to anyone. And this is known as the Barnum effect. This is when we write a fortune cookie statement or write a horoscope. It's written in a non-testable way. It's written in a very broad, suggestible way that it seems like you pay attention to what makes sense and we just disregard what doesn't make sense. And it, we keep confirming it. Through confirmation bias, we keep assuming it's correct. And so this makes it very attractive. Plus the fact it seems to rely on these four personality types which have been with us since ancient Egypt. We find these four types very attractive even though it doesn't reflect the science. And so the Myers-Briggs really entertaining, really fun, but not scientifically accurate. So where do we go next? Well, next we're gonna talk about some theories of personality that try to bring science rather than just theory to the table.